mention Rupert Grint's childhood was ruled by Harry Potter and Hogwarts. As trainee wizard Ron Weasley, he spent much of his life from the age of 11 onwards in front of movie cameras. Recently, Grint has exchanged the film set for the theatre and is making his stage debut in London's West End. The play in question is a revival of Jez Butterworth's hit Mojo. Set in the 1950s, it's a sinister look at the underbelly of London club land. Grint plays a pill-popping hood called Sweets. And when we met recently, met recently, he told me about Mojo. It's set in a CD Soho nightclub. Hmm. And, um, yeah, I play Sweets, who's kind of one-sixth of the employees who work there. The club has this kind of crowning jewel, who's Silver Johnny, who's this singer who does a show kind of a couple of nights a week. And, yeah, he goes missing. It's pretty violent. It's fairly foul-mouthed. It's not most people's ideas of London in the 1950s. <laughs> um, how much research did you, did you all do for this? We did tons of research on the 50s, and we had a board uh, up on the, in, the, in the room of kind of all kind of 50s paraphernalia and, and, and kind of the icons of that era. And we also uh, met up with a load of uh, 50s Soho locals. Oh really? It was in fact an incredibly violent, drunken time in Soho. It was one of the it was, notorious yeah. places it was in the Western world. And your character, Sweets, is one of the most vulnerable people I suppose in the club. There's yes. a lot of hardcore hoods there, but your guy is, is not quite so. He's kind of quite a sweet guy. Um, he's the kind of drug man. Mm. He he's handing out the sweets. Pills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. You're on stage virtually the whole way through this play, which is quite a long play. Yeah. Night after night after night. Yeah. So physically exhausting. Yeah. And unlike the world of kind of Harry Potter and big films, you know, behind the set here, it's not very luxurious, not very <laughs> glamorous. No, it is kind of a different world. Um, and it's, I mean, something I've always kind of, theatre was something I've always kind of ruled out, really, because I've got, I'm of quite a nervous Too much like hard work yeah. or... It is. I mean, yeah. I'm quite a nervous person, naturally, and just the thought of doing eight shows a week in front of 700 people was, seemed quite impossible to me. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this came along, and it's just such a great script and a great cast. The characters are all got this really kind of unique way of mm. communicating with each other, and it's, it's quite hard to tune into, I think, for the audience at first. It takes a while, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, as I say, a million miles away from the Harry Potter world, Harry Potter is, in one respect, a fantastic stroke of luck, I guess, for anyone um, yeah. who, who, like you who's an actor. But at the same time, you then, it then stops and you have to reinvent yourself again. Is that, is that how you see it? You're starting all I guess over so. again? Yeah, I mean, that's, I suppose that is the challenge. I mean, it, it was a very strange time when I finished Potter because it was basically my whole childhood, and suddenly it kind of... It must have been a funny childhood. It was interesting, yeah, yeah unique. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of... It became routine because it was... It mm. kind of really consumed all of us. It was this bubble that we all lived in for 10 years and it became normal. But suddenly it finished. It came down to one take and yes. we were out in the real world and it was a, scare, a scary time actually. It was, I didn't really know what I was going to do. And you've all gone off in slightly different directions. Right, yeah. Daniel Radcliffe threw himself into the most, un, you know, <laughs> most extreme stage part. He had his kit off in Equus and so forth pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. Are you doing something similar? I mean, your film, CBGBs, you're playing a pretty foul-mouthed punk rocker. It's never been a conscious effort, really, to, to find stuff that kind of detaches me from that, that role. It's just, it just coincidentally has just kind of happened that way, and it's, I just picked the script. We should explain that this is about the, the birth of punk in America. And you're a member of a, get a band called the Dead Boys. Yes. It was a real band, and Cheetah Chrome is your character, a real, a real singer. Uh, very much alive as well. He was, he was on set while we were filming, and what did he think? He was really pleased. I mean, he, he's even a cameo in, in, in the, in the mm. film. So, um, yeah, it was great to meet him, and it's kind of daunting playing someone who's living, and kind of watching you. Uh, yeah. Off stage, but um, this was the era of sort of television and Debbie Harry and right. all the early New York bands, talking heads, the Ramones, yeah, yeah. Talking Heads, all coming through the same club, yeah. run by a completely chaotic, manic but rather inspired club owner. I think I think it's probably Alan Rickman's most brilliant part so far. Yeah, yeah. Where are you guys from? Cleveland, sir. Well, I'm impressed with the youth of Cleveland. Oh, you shouldn't be. Why not? A lot of losers. Well. You seem awfully polite. Yeah, well, the Roger boys. That was wild. Uh, he's great. I mean, he's just completely. I mean, it's it's strange kind of. Of course, of you know him very well. Of from course, the yeah, yeah. So it was kind of it's 
just crazy to see him in such a different role. I mean, it's, it's, it was so nice to have a kind of, uh, familiar face as well, because going on a new yeah. set is quite a scary thing anyway. So is this the future for Rupert Grint? The boards, you know, in front of live audiences, plus a bit of filming. Have you, have you got it? Yeah. Have you got the kind of theatre thing into your blood now? I do, yeah. I mean, it was quite an adjustment. It's a very different, different thing in a different world that I'm still kind of adjusting to, I think. But it's, yeah, it's just so thrilling. Being back think. in London, do you find the pressure of Potter fans pursuing you everywhere overwhelming, intolerable? <laughs> how, do, how do you deal with it? You seem quite relaxed. I don't kind of take it too seriously. It's just... It's part of it, it's, it's crazy, and it's just become a part of my life over the last 10 years, and it's, I'm quite blasé. It's like someone asking you, me for directions now, mm. but it's just, it's, it's that it's a, yeah, kind okay. of routine. Yeah. Sign, yeah. have a photograph taken, That's move right, on. Yeah. 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 Um, but Not yeah, good. it's a weird thing, but it's, it's part of it, and it's, it's, it's nice to have the support as well. Uh, a lot of them kind of turned up to the, to the show. And well, it certainly means they're more Mixed audience, age-wise, than you normally get in these yeah, places. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah all ages. Rupert Grint, thank you very much for joining you. us. Cheers. Cheers.